So what's going on, Amanda? How can I help? I am married. Me and my husband, we've been married for a little over three years now. We have an 11-month-old baby boy. Mm -hmm. Um, I I do have some postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety that I'm dealing with. Um, But You did have a baby in in a global pandemic, right? Yes. Oh, mercy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the other most Southern thing. Oh, mercy. Hey, you've earned your postpartum. So, man, God bless you. That's a tough, tough season to have a, of a young one. And so blessings to you. All right. So go ahead. I found out in early December, um, a complete shocker. Um, my husband had improper contact with a minor at our church. Um, and I'm having trouble dealing with the aftermath of that with the church, with the other family involved, um, and just moving forward with this situation. When my husband comes home, I, I'm just, I'm at my wits end and I feel like, um, I, I just, I don't know what to do. Yeah, that's a lot. All right. So walk me through some of the particulars here. And this is a highly sensitive situation. And so you at any moment say, I don't want to talk about that part. Okay. Is that cool? Sure. Absolutely. Or uh, here's a better way to say it. You're in a hundred percent control of this narrative. And so at any moment you can bow out. Okay. Is that cool? Yes. Okay. So when you say inappropriate contact with a minor, what does that mean? How old, what was the inappropriate contact? Walk me through that. Sure. Um, The girl is 13 years old. Um, I found out that he held hands with her at church one Wednesday night. Um, She says no sexual contact happened. He says no sexual contact happened. So um, hopefully that not reduces some of this, but I guess it doesn't make it even harder. Um, Well, holding hands with a 13-year-old is sexual contact. Um, Oh, okay. Maybe they didn't touch it with kids. We call it bathing suit parts, right? So like any part that's covered up by a bathing suit is off limits. But what was the situation where somebody would, We how did that, how, what's the narrative that how they ended up holding hands? Sure. Um, what happened was um, uh, the girl's dad uh, helps operate the sound booth at our church. Mm-hmm. And uh, controls the the tech side, and he wanted to learn how to work it as well, so that way um, not just one person is stuck doing that, and there can be a a rotation. And she was back there as well um, with with her dad, Mm -hmm. Um, and she, and of course, this is no justification whatsoever. It's just me trying to gain a remote sense of understanding. Um, she was kind of making moves at him, um, where she was biting her lip. Not a thing. Not a thing at all. Oh, Because she's a child. Don't even go there in your head. Okay. Don't even go there in your head. I know you want to protect your husband and more importantly, you want to protect your sanity right now. Okay. Yeah. I don't Mm -hmm. care if that 13 year old threw herself at him, sent him a bunch of inappropriate pictures. I don't care what that child did. The adult sure. in that situation uh, is the adult in that situation, right? Uh, absolutely, 100%. Okay, so go ahead. So, and, so, um, she, so she she was, um, if, I don't even know what to say. She's a kid. Um, he felt as though he was she was being provocative? Um, in a sense, and then he said that um, he – he was just thinking about a, a former void in his teenage life that was unfilled due to trauma. Um, and he just needed words of affirmation and a kind touch. From a kid? Yep. <sighs> yeah, dude. <sighs> Man, Amanda, I don't get mad very often. And. Um, yeah, I'm pretty close. So what was the church's response here? Um, of course, um, when, when this was found out, um, we had a meeting with the deacons. Um, there, there are five of them at the church, um, the girl's parents. And then, um, my husband was present at the meeting. 
I was on speakerphone because, you know, I'm, I, I, someone has to be home to take care of our, of our son. Um, so the decision was, was that um, he needed he needed to go to intense therapy or the dad was going to immediately go to the police and, and file a police report and have, you know, my husband go to jail, uh, you know, r- rightfully so for it. Um, so, so hold on, so, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh gosh, dude, man. So the church didn't call the police. They didn't call a social worker. They didn't get p- the authorities involved. No. Oh, it pisses me off so bad. So bad. Oh, man. Amanda, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not sorry. I know uh, you, My anger is not at you. My anger is at churches covering up stuff like this, which is how it perpetuates and goes on and on and on and on. And it communicates to teenagers that adults aren't held ca- like responsible in the appropriate nuclear option, which is what should happen in these moments. Oh my gosh. Okay, so <laughs> man. Woo-hoo. I'm singing for a second. Is that cool, Amanda? Oh, uh, sing away. <laughs> I'm sure you sang My Mercy too, right? So, yeah. long story short, um my blood pressure's getting up and I'm going to get that uh man, I don't think I've ever gotten super pissed off on the radio. Um Maybe I have. I don't remember. Not like this. Um, so what's your ultimate question? Let's just get to that. Sure. Um, well, since, since this has gone on, um, my husband did go to therapy. Um, he, he checked himself into uh, a place called The Ranch. Um, it's, you know, outside of Nashville. Yeah, I know about it. And um, so he, he's there right now. He's in the sex addiction program. Well, hold, and, on. hold on, hold um, on. Is he a sex addict? Uh, yes, yes. So is he a pornography addict? Does he have lots of affairs? Um, he has never had an affair, but uh, pornography addiction, yes. So he's never had an affair, but he claims he's a sex addict? Uh, yes. So I've heard the fall to my knees save me i'm so sorry i'm an addict excuse often in the last decade 20 years um the sex addicts i've known the sex addicts i've i have um several of my mentors and professors were actually like they were um they were trained therapists that worked with people with sexual behavior disorders and True sex addicts, man, they 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 don't have an affair. It's a way of life. It's the way I eat gummy candies. It's pathological, right? Um, anyway, that's not why you called. Um, I, I have a hard time believing somebody, and, may, and maybe there's a medical doctor out there or a psychologist that overrides me, and they can override me all day long. I'm not going to go to war with them on that, but I have a hard time um, signing up for somebody who's a sex addict who, um, instead of saying that there's somebody who made awful, terrible, disgusting decisions and needs to be criminally held liable for what they're doing, or at the very least, not around kids. Um, yeah, yikes. Okay. So he's in rehab now. He, he's in rehab, um, cause he held hands with a 13 year old and, is he getting out soon, I guess, if this is early December? So he's coming out next whenever, right? Yeah, by, by the end of this month. Okay, so can I, can I um, just make a guess here? In sure. the, are, have you all been allowed to, usually there's a few weeks of no contact, and then there's just limited, you know, drip by drip contact. Have you all started reconnecting again? Uh, yes, he, he gets one 20-minute phone call every other day. Okay, so... I'm just going to take a wild guess here. You are not going to believe, Amanda, how much I've changed. The things I've learned about myself in my past, in my childhood are so big and so deep, and it's amazing. And I can't wait to be around you and the baby because everything is is clear now. I understand, and it's so incredible how much I've grown, and I'm better. Am I close? 
Yes. Like right hitting the nail on the head? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You're oh. like 90, 99%. <sighs> Man. Yeah. So what are you going to do? What do you want to do? Um, let, me, let me back up. I, I think you know exactly what you want to do. I think you're an extraordinary good person. I think you are a um, – are you a Christian Yes. Okay, so you have a Christian ethic about you. You've got a way of being. You've got a picture of what your marriage and this new little baby was going to be. How old are you? Um, I'm 33. Okay, so you had a, you're 33. You've waited for this. You've got a husband who was participating. He was a, a guy who helped at the sound booth in church, right? So you had this picture, and now it's an ash, right? Yes, com- completely. And the temptation is to try to just pick up all this ash in a bucket and start trying to duct tape it back together. Think of it like the Twin Towers, if they went and swept up all that glass and dust and twisted metal and steel and tried to rebuild it with that those materials. You can't do it. Mm-hmm. So any yeah. relationship you have with this dude moving forward is after this. Mm-hmm. Okay? And that is hard to hear. I'm, I can't be the first person who's told you that, but it's hard to hear, I know. Um, but moving forward, trying to reclaim this picture, it is no more. Okay? Gotcha. Um, your church, quite honestly, let you down. Your husband let you down. Um, the whole thing's a mess, and I'm so, so sorry, Amanda. Oh, well, thank you. It's- I know I didn't, I didn't help you. I know. Um, you know what you want, what you need to do. You know what you want to do. What, just for my own sanity and for the listeners here, what, what do you think the next month looks like for you? I think in the next month, um, he'll come home and for a few days, he will be a completely transformed person, but then little by little, it'll revert back and, um, it, it'll just go back to where it started, you know, just, you know, any kind of progress is just unraveled because, you know, he, he gives me a whole list of things that he wants to change and and everything and how life wants to be. And um, he's going to follow the 12 steps to a T. And um, I, I have a feeling that being out in the real world that he'll he will real like recognize how hard that actually is and um i don't know if he's if he's up for the challenge of making such a huge change in his life you know for for such a long period of time because it you know it that would be a hard thing to even attempt to you know come back from i mean there there, there's so much depth to it from from what i'm understanding and so i I just have a feeling that he'll get out, do well for a little while, and then crash and burn. Do you have somebody who's walking alongside you through this? Yes. Okay. So, um, I'm just a guy on the radio, okay? Uh, So, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm going to tell you what I would do in my house, okay? Um, Nope, I'm going to tell you what I would tell my sister. I'm going to tell you what I would tell... A best friend of mine who was a co-worker who was a woman in the same situation okay um, if you've got an 11 month old in your house somebody getting out of rehab whatever that's supposed to mean for this situation after 28 days is not coming back to my house for a season okay um, I would tell my sister not to let that happen I would tell my wife um, well, I'm married to her, so that'd be weird. But um, I, I would tell the f- close friends of mine in my life that are married women with small kids that that would not be a wise decision. Um, I would, in my opinion, your church leadership has proven themselves to be not worth following. I wouldn't go back to that building. And I know that's hard, and I know that you probably got deep relationships there. Um, but they let you down. They let that little girl down. They let that 13-year-old girl down. They let her family down. They let that congregation down. And it's disgusting. Um, 
But at the end of the day, I would not have somebody just pop back into my house without some very serious couples counseling, without somebody walking alongside you, both a friend and a professional, if not a couple, and without a very, very clear plan on your part about what it's going to look like to be well, what it's going to look like to be welcomed back in this house. Okay. Now, if you've ever listened to this show, you know that I am all about redemption. I think it's deep. And I think that there is not a lost person. I also don't mess around with people who hurt kids. I just don't. Mm -hmm. And so can you and him reconcile and can he change his life? I believe so. I wouldn't be sitting in this chair. I wouldn't be doing this job. Is it going to be a hard, messy, ugly, bumpy road? Yes. Can y'all get a hole in that congregation? I don't think you can. Um, can you get a hole, just pop back in 28 days later? I would say almost no chance. Do I know that that means that I'm telling you that I would recommend to my friend that they have to be a single parent for a season? Yeah, I know. And that really is hard. Um, but what the most important thing you've got to do here is number one, you got to kill this fantasy, right? It doesn't exist anymore as it once was. And the second thing you've got to do is you've got to get somebody to walk alongside you and make sure you have on paper what he's going to have to do to earn the privilege to be your husband, to earn the privilege to parent that child in, in proximity. Because what happens is, you have a feeling like I'm just going to know. And as you mentioned, it's just going to kind of slowly slip back to the way it was. Right. And you're going to feel right. crazy. And um, if he truly is an addict, which who knows, man, I'm not a psychologist. so I'm not going to say anything else about that. There is some master manipulation going on. Right. And mm -hmm. there is some extraordinary gaslighting. There's some giftedness in getting people to believe that um, you're the crazy one, not them. Right? Right. Any answer to why in the world were you holding hands with my 13-year-old daughter other than I screwed up bad and I'm, I, 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 I just screwed up? Not, well, you know, I was trying to live through a fantasy that I had when I was a kid. Anything other than that is somebody not taking responsibility. Um, anyway, I could harp on that all day long. All that to say is I want you really, please, Amanda, get with somebody, get with two people, get with three people who will sit down with you and really craft almost in stone what these boundaries are going to look like. Someone okay. who's going to be able to say to you out loud, like I am now, what was is no more. And any relationship mm -hmm. moving forward is something that y'all are going to have to recraft and rebuild together. Because it's all different gotcha. after this. Okay? Okay. It's different after this. Can it be good? I think so. I do. But does he have a lot of work to do? Yes. And the final thing is, this isn't to you. This is to anybody leading any sort of organization with kids. You, can't, you can't have these tribunals where you agree to this, or I'm going to tell on you, you can't. Bring in authorities every time. Bring in social workers and people to be with the kids every time. Investigate stuff. Make sure it's right. These little side deals, this little nonsense goes on and on and on. And the forest fire of this trauma rages on for generations. Stop it. If you're a church... If you're a school, if you're a daycare, whatever you happen to be, you're a coach, you signed up to have kids in your presence, which means you signed up to protect children. And a 28-day visit to Nashville is not going to keep your kids safe. Cops will. Police officers will. Therapists will. Social workers will. <sighs> well, I'm sorry, Amanda. That wasn't directed at you. But here's the deal. No, that's okay. <laughs> here's the deal. Um, to everybody listening, um, Amanda's in a situation where somebody has dropped a bomb in her world. And Amanda, I'm heartbroken for you. I wish I had something else I could say. I'm heartbroken for you. Um, and it's going to be a hard 2021 20, for you. Um, 
I'll be thinking about you. I want you to keep us posted. Please, please circle back. Shoot me an email. Let me know how it goes. And to her husband, if he happens to be listening to this, you're not going to weaponize this situation. You're not going to go to war with your wife. You're not going to be dramatic. You screwed up. You hurt a kid. You're not well, and you got a long road ahead of you.